Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to look at some incredible venomous snake TikToks, but at the end of this video I also want to highlight someone for the right reasons. Let's dive in. That looked like a Stokes sea snake, hope I'm right on that. And that guy was pretty calm really, I mean you could tell he was breathing heavily, but that is your best option in that case. That was cool to see a Gaboon Viper yawn. Obviously Gaboon Vipers have the longest fangs of any venomous snake in the world. And I think that's extra cool because there's so many animals that have these elaborate threat displays, like one we'll see in a moment, but the Gaboon Viper literally doesn't need one. He's been doing it so much. What did it do? No, no, that's okay. I'll just do this to get some photos of it. He is hooping his body up like that to make himself look bigger to try and scare away predators. I have caught 50 of these guys and I've never once seen this in person. There you saw a bandy bandy doing its threat display. As I mentioned earlier, it's got a pretty elaborate one, raising a hoop up and trying to make itself look bigger and scarier. That is a quite a secretive little elapid snake from Australia, which despite being related to taipans and other elapids, albeit distantly, has quite weak venom and it's actually considered harmless. In Australia, we have this snake, it's called a hoop snake. Well, that's what we call it anyway, the locals, we call it a hoop snake. Uh, what it does, it actually bites its own tail and makes itself into a hoop, okay? Into like a little circle, and then it actually rolls down the hill, like a bike tire or a wheel or a hoop rolling down the hill. And they'll roll down and then it, just as they, just before they get you, they spring open and they latch onto you. Um, and they can be really nasty and you don't even realize they're coming. They're just this thin hoop rolling down the hill. Uh, the legend of the hoop snake. That one has cropped up independently in several different countries. But I do wonder if in Australia that legend comes from the bandy bandy behaviour. Because you know how these things start. Someone will see a small bit of behaviour, they'll embellish it, it becomes something that kind of snowballs. I don't know. I don't have any proof of that. But it does make me wonder. Well we are in for a fun one today. Because this guy right here, this is a poisonous snake. But it is also a venomous snake. Not only is it venomous, it's actually got a medically significant venom. These are beautiful snakes from Southeast Asia. And on top of them being rear fanged, they also have a little patch on the back of their neck that secretes poison. Kind of like frogs do. Or some frogs and toads at least. That is absolutely correct. The tiger keelback has caused one fatality as far as I know. I think it was someone keeping it as a pet. I'm not 100% on that. Someone let me know in the comments. And yes, they are venomous and poisonous. And there's a few other snakes around the world that we've now discovered which are venomous and poisonous. My personal theory is that in time we'll discover many, 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 many more technically poisonous snakes just like we've discovered more and more venomous lizards. A puff adder biting a rubber hand to show you what their strike is like. What I took away from that though is that the snake is backed up. It's not acting aggressive. It seems actually quite reluctant to bite. That helps you understand how Puff adder bites can occur actually. I mean, you could sit down on a log, fall off or something and accidentally put your hand on one, or you could step on one. They do puff, they make a loud hiss, but sometimes they don't do it. You know, that is their main deterrent is making a loud hiss, but sometimes I don't know why they don't do it. Probably because they believe they're so well camouflaged and you could probably get that close and accidentally nudge up against one. That was quite subtle, what happened there. Um, obviously I feel sorry for that guy, but if you handle snakes like that, that's something that can happen. It had a lot of its body still on the ground, and a lot of people have seen them drop a whole snake's body so it's hanging and release the head like that to kind of drop it. But when it's already got a portion of its body platformed against the ground, it's got a platform to push off of, it's got leverage, and it can just maneuver around and get you. 
Snakes in Australia can get very hot, so try to come inside. Like this deadly tiger snake, the fifth most venomous in the entire world, which found its way into a lady's underwear drawer in Eltham, Victoria. I think that's a great example of a situation where you could get bitten by a venomous snake through no fault of your own. Often I seem quite critical of people on this channel, but I don't really intend it to be critical of people who get bitten by accident. When I'm critical of people, it's usually people I think are taking risks which might get the hobby of keeping reptiles banned, or people who I feel handle them in a cruel way. Let's check out this Bushmaster. The longest venomous snake native to the Americas. One of the few vipers in the world that actually lays eggs and protects them right up until they're about to hatch highly potent venom. The snake has crazy camouflage, able to fully ambush its prey just by staying still for weeks. Interesting information, but again, why the obsession with free handling? Why not just look at it? That's the question we should probably ask ourselves about a lot of these videos. That snake is not dead and you do not want to touch it. That is a setup. Meet the Rinkels. It's a highly venomous nope rope that's found in Southern Africa. And at first glance, it looks like a normal cobra, but it's not. In fact, it's not a cobra at all, which makes it even crazier that they can spit their venom. They're actually the only non-cobra that can spit venom. Not to mention, they can spit up to two and a half meters and they aim for the eyes, which will blind you. Odd Danny upping his game a bit with the facts there, his, his content is improving. <laughs> I know a lot of people get really annoyed by the stuff he says. But yeah, that was, that was pretty good. The only thing I'd really like to hear about would be also the fact that the ring cows, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce it properly, has just openings at the tip of its fangs. So it has to do like muscular contraction and kind of a flicking upward movement to spray its venom. Whereas a true spitting cobra has little orifices at the front of its fangs. And that's, that's kind of an interesting point. They've evolved the same behavior, but they've evolved it slightly differently. There you saw a Bulenga's garter snake. Now garter snakes in the US are cute little stripy snakes which make great pets, but they also make a horrible smell when you catch them, so they're, they're kind of a mixed bag. But garter snakes in Southern Africa are a type of a lapid, so they're related to cobras, crates, mambas, all the rest. Um, but they're kind of fossorial, as far as I know, they're borrowing. They're very secretive, they don't come out much, you don't see them much, and they've also developed a weaker venom. The thinking is that yes, they are from that lineage of very deadly snakes, but they hunt smaller, slower prey, mostly underground, and they just don't need a fast-acting, particularly strong venom. So, that's pretty interesting to think about how evolution works if you don't use it you lose it basically but more to the point i just don't ever see anything about them i don't see anyone keeping them i rarely see content on them i'm just wondering if in southern africa if they really are that secretive they're really that hard to spot by the way if you are enjoying this video please don't forget to like subscribe and possibly even join it all helps i'm gonna try and take this channel as far as i possibly can Take a look over my spitting cobra's eyeballs. There is a stuck piece of shed. It is a retained eye cap. And unfortunately, I need to get that off as soon as possible to make sure this snake keeps its eyesight. Let's see if I can grab him behind his head, put my hand here, push him. Here we go. Yep, all right. It's not safe to remove this eye cap. It is way too dry. So I need to put the snake inside of a bucket and soak it for a little bit. And then we'll come back, revisit, and try to remove these eye caps. All right, so we have the spitting cobra inside of a container with water, hoping that it releases those eye caps so we can safely remove them. That's not my method. Personally, I usually just wait till the next shed and then get the snake extra humid, get its whole substrate humid for a couple of days when I know it's about to shed after the eyes have gone past the blue phase. And then generally the, the retained eye cap comes off with the one underneath in the next shed. That's always worked for me might not work in every situation. This guy is someone who I've been critical of in the past because of the way he handles reptiles, but he clearly cares about his reptiles and he clearly does his best to care for them properly. He's making an effort here. So we have to recognize that. And that's the problem with a lot of these creators that we see online. A lot of the really popular guys you see 
do love their animals, they do care for them, but they're also free handling in a way which promotes bans eventually, quite frankly, and they're free handling in a way that does lead to accidents and sometimes is unnecessary stress on the animals. So I don't really dislike or hate any of the people in these videos, I'm just trying to get us towards a different path where we treat snakes with the level of respect of an animal that if it doesn't want to be touched, you don't touch it, and that's that. This is a video someone sent me of a guy who basically falls asleep and he wakes up and there's a king cobra in his bedroom and we'll watch the rest now but it's just basically wandering around and, and scaring the crap out of him. I think he played that perfectly. I think that King Cobras are not aggressive, they're quite smart, they don't necessarily want to fight a human, and they don't want to try and eat you either, so I think, yeah, play dead, don't move. When it eventually notices him, it'll be out of there. This is my big black mamba, and he is shedding his skin. This is pretty interesting. We don't catch this on camera too often. He's already got that top layer of shed off of his head, but he's trying to get that lower jaw piece of skin unstuck so then it will just work its way down his body he looks like a complete and utter goofball while he's doing this because he's rubbing his little face on everything scrunching up his nose just looking like a real fool i enjoy watching them do this though i think he's adorable he does not know that i'm inside the enclosure with him which is probably best nine foot black mamba probably not real great to be super close to him but look at that beautiful eye this guy's absolutely gorgeous it's right about here that he notices that I am in here with him. And yep, that, that was the moment. That right there is he's like, oh, like crap, there's a person. Personally, I enjoyed seeing a black mamba doing that kind of behavior. I think it's great to see that these snakes are also just animals with their own thoughts and behaviors and that they can be interesting in a, in a different way besides the venom aspect. Now we're moving on to a guy I found who I believe genuinely loves snakes. He calls himself that snake guy. I think he really loves the snakes. I think he's making the content for the right reasons and I think it's good that occasionally we shine a light on it. So someone who works with snakes, they are grossly over sensationalized all the time. You always hear the, oh, I'd hurt myself getting away from that thing. I'd have a heart attack or any variation of these things because people are terrified of snakes, which is fine. But especially the venomous ones, they are so anticlimactic on what they do whenever you encounter them. It's not even funny. I'm literally out here in the woods now, and I'm going to go find a couple of venomous snakes, and I'm going to show you exactly how these encounters go. All right. Let's see. There we go. Snake number one under a warm piece of tin. See, he's interacting with it in a calm way and he's trying to make us think about how we perceive snakes and that's the kind of content I can get behind. Chicken coops equal a lot more rodents, so the snakes hang out around here a lot and we found a bunch of different species, so super excited to go find some more, but PJ went to follow me back there this way and almost step on this guy right next to the chicken coop. How freaking gorgeous is this snake? This is another adult canebrake rattlesnake, and this guy's more than likely hanging out here because with all the corn that my boss feeds the chickens, the squirrels hang out here a lot, and these guys eat a lot of squirrels around here. But just look how freaking beautiful that is. I'm going to grab my camera out of the truck, and we're going to see if we can't get some better pictures and videos for you guys to see her up close. That really was a nice one. If you watch the whole clip on his channel, 
basically he takes some photos of a snake, he relocates it, he holds it with a hook, he doesn't do any of the making it strike, yanking it around, you know, someone said recently twirling snakes above your head, um, joking about how people on, on YouTube usually portray them, but he's just an all-round nice guy and just really seems to love snakes and he appreciates them like we all should. So I thought we could take a look at it. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do come back next week. I'll have something else cooked up for you. Thank you very much.